Issue 121. We start out with Kintobor telling Sonic that the zone's been pretty quiet lately. I'm sure that won't last. He tells Sonic that Tails is fighting Badniks in Metropolis, and Sonic immediately shows no faith in him and assumes he needs his help fast. At least he's concerned about him. And it's sweet of him to call Tails my little buddy. It's a nice occasional step off from Pixel Brain. Then Sonic says, we don't want Tails getting the idea that he can do without me, while smirking. We see Grimer only just now telling Emperor Kodor that the Emeralds are the power source of the floating island. First off, wouldn't that be something you just assume? And second, didn't he side with him several issues ago? You'd think after he said he'd lead him to the Emeralds, this would be the second thing out of his mouth. He says that Knuckles now has an army of Guardian robots to help him. And Grimer annoys me because after the Emperor says they'll rule the universe later, he stutters in hesitation and justifies that he got tired of being on the side of the losers. He's acting as if he thinks it's evil to betray Eggman and is trying to justify it. The Emperor is told that some prisoners who defaced one of his statues are here. And he says not now, and he'll decide their punishments in a year. In a year? Also, I guess this is a world where there are no judges, and just every single crime is determined the, the punishment of by the Emperor himself. Which would explain why he postponed it by a year, because he's probably got a huge amount of different people that he still hasn't gotten the chance to punish yet. What kind of legal system is that? That's crazy. Then the prisoners do some things that aren't very clearly illustrated, getting a robot destroyed. Uh, somehow they're mere mortals? And the purple guy creates a warp ring for them both to warp away with. Sonic sees Tails fighting Badniks, and then arbitrarily says that the little guy really doesn't need his help. Way too quickly considering how he reacted before. And he teases Tails about thinking he could get all the glory for himself, instead of actually admitting to him that he was proud of him. Sonic points out that they haven't fought this series of badniks in years, so Eggman must have known they'd win easily against them. And he also points out how badly built they are. It looks like he's trying to undermine Tails' accomplishments fighting badniks without him. And while that probably isn't his conscious intent at the moment, and he's just trying to make a point about why Eggman might have done this, it probably has the same effect anyways on Tails. Then, for the sake of plot convenience, Sonic immediately guesses that these badniks have been controlled by someone else because they're too weak for Eggman. Since he sees who's remote controlling them in the very next panel, it would have felt more natural if he had said he knew they were being controlled in this panel where he was already seeing the culprits. He drags them out of hiding with a super speed and learns that they're Robotnik fanboys, of course. And one of the fanboys built the badniks themselves from old design plans that Eggman himself gave to them. Tails comes around with the local cops, as Sonic puts it, so he decides to leave. Then we see that the escaped anti draconers had coincidentally warped to a place relevant to the plot and comic out of all other places by accident. They had warped right inside Eggman's base. Also, these guys don't look like Dracon people at all, so I guess the Dracon Empire takes non draconiers as prisoner. In the next story, Knuckles tells Porker to get away from a circle he's trying to translate the writing on, and it grows into a gateway to the special zone, which sucks them in, and teleports them specifically to the bottom of the East River of New Tech City, just to be a dick. Good thing Knuckles can swim, and gets Porker out of it just fine, with only Porker coughing because I guess he had his mouth open when thrown into the water because he was screaming, and Knuckles didn't. The person talking to them is probably used to people showing up in the special zone, because he doesn't react much to learning they're from a different dimension. Porker says that he'd never make it back home, because he almost drowned just then. And all the person cares about is that they scared the fish away. Meanwhile, we see the Chaotic knocking a criminal to a daze, and Espio says that he can hit as hard as Mighty when he's a spinning top, and wants to ask the dazed criminal who hit harder. The rivalry is kind of brought to a ridiculous extent here. He isn't able to answer and gets dragged into the cop truck as Espio says humorously, I'll admit he mumbled a bit, but he obviously was trying to say Espio. Just after Porker tries to call the Chaotix, a cop says that the third time the phone's been vandalized this month, and they just assume Knuckles and Porker were the ones doing it. The story ends with Porker being mistaken for someone named Oscar. Are they trying to reveal that Porker is Oscar and always came from here? 
Or is it just what it looks like? Either way, it's pretty sloppy if the cops just assume they're guilty. How many times did they arrest the wrong person for being the first one to use the payphone or something else after it was vandalized? Also, they're very lucky the special zone of New Tech City still has payphones. Or they would have been screwed. In the next story, we see Max Gamble in front of a happy robot slave addressing wealthy visitors from the Diamond Mine Zone. Why isn't he still in prison? Why was he never... Why, like, like he betrayed people for Eggman. Why did the mob not send him to prison? Sonic's told that he's getting new investors for his robot building. Who would ever invest in that for a villain who is caught working with Eggman? Other, th other than blatant Eggman supporters, of course. I hope they explain that. One of the civilians complains that the robot can do the work of 10 builders at a fraction of the cost, causing Sonic to call Max a creep. Out of complaint utter nowhere, the robot goes haywire and tries to attack, asking who wants a barn conversion. Gamble complains that this wasn't supposed to happen until after he'd sold him. And why would he think this would make him more money than simply having the robot do the work I thought it was going to do? As Sonic's trying to go after him for selling faulty goods, he oddly stops to politely listen to Charmy, who explains that Vector signed up a portal here from the special zone for him. Sonic says, save it, Charmy, you're in the way. And Charmy says there's no need to be rude. Sonic lies that what he meant originally was that he's in the way of the hammer, which Charmy conveniently dodges despite it being behind him where he couldn't see it. Good thing the robot waited so long to use it for the sake of being polite. Sonic destroys the robot with super speed, and Max Gamble, who probably just goes by a nickname, or else comes from a long line of casino owners, warns him that the plutonium power core of the robot's head is going to explode. And then I'm probably very confused as Gamble seems to react negatively to Charmy's annoying talking when no such thing occurred yet, and he takes off to go into hiding. Oh, it was just a video glitch from what I downloaded. This is the panel where Charmy says what annoys him into surrendering. The next story has Techno learn about Vermin's escape, and Chorpheus decides to go after him, with Amy and Techno deciding to tag along. After Vermin bullies some insect farmers for no reason, Chorpheus shows up, and Vermin hits a generator with his tails to try to power up, and that works instead of overloading his circuits from electrocuting himself. He tries to absorb Chorpheus' data, and that gets his armor to open up by borrowing the program that lets Chorpheus get out of his armor. Wait, Chorpheus? can't still get of his armor, right? That would be pretty annoying if he lost that program forever thanks to him. Shorpheus destroys his armor from the inside with a laser. Amy punches Vermin without a suit, and he ends up tied up as we learn that Shorpheus is now trapped in his armor again. Well, at least now he doesn't have to spend some time vulnerable inside of his armor where bad things start happening and take some time getting the armor back on. And I guess it makes up for the Deus Ex Machina letting him get out of his armor since it was undone right away. Then why do it then? The first and second stories were by Nitro Kitchen. It was about Tails beating some pathetic, outdated badniks that are remote controlled by the Robotnik fan club, and the prisoners of the Dracon Empire escaping to Eggman's face by coincidence because plot. Seriously, this is so contrived. Of all the different places on the planet, why did they warp to Eggman's base? Sonic figured out what was going on way too easily, and it should have had some more faith in Tails. The second story, which I forgot all about after reading this issue, was about Knuckles and Porker getting sucked into the special zone by an echidna portal to it, and it ends with some cops deciding to blame them for vandalism when they try to call the Chaotix. How many false arrests have they made anyways? The last two stories are by Lou Stringer. I forgot all about the third one too, with really showing that maybe you shouldn't have that many different stories in one issue. The third one was about Max Gable, why is he out of prison, seeing that the worker robot he made to drastically reduce worker costs went berserk too early. Why would he ever intentionally make it to do that? That wouldn't drastically reduce worker costs. That wouldn't get him more money. Why sell it like that? If the point is to secretly sell it to people who want to use berserk robots against Sonic, then he didn't really make that very clear. And the day is saved when Sonic beats the robot and Charmy annoys him into surrendering, being useful like that. But Charmy wasn't really necessary in the story, because Sonic could have just picked Gamble up with a super speed and arrested him, him himself. And we also could have had Sonic be the one who would throw the plutonium core away. Not to mention, if it's radioactive, I'm pretty sure that it exploding would still cause problems for the people 
that it exploded near, even if it didn't explode like right on them. And the final story has Amber's gift of short fuse being almost invalidated right away as short fuse has to let Vermin steal it to get him out of the armor, while returning to being trapped in his armor because status quo is God. I should have never had any faith in the comic to let that stick. But for some reason, I forgot that this happened so quickly after he got the program, even after I reviewed it. Shorty sure is lucky Vermin's absorbing of his programming only took away that program and didn't hurt his brain or anything.